Right, so I'm all about finding new ways to work around that eight track limit in Ableton Live Lite. And you know, there's multiple ways to do this. And in fact, I have a couple videos on that topic already, which you can find here. But you know, as soon as I found out a new one, I like to share that with you guys. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So without further ado, let's open up a new project here in Ableton Live. Uh, light 11 as you can see so we're gonna be working with MIDI I think there's a way to make this work with audio as well maybe I'll address that in a future video so um, traditionally what you would do is you would slap a certain instrument onto that MIDI track say a piano patch and that track is gonna be responsible for your piano sound and then if you want to add some bass you would create a separate track like that so in this video right here I showed you how to use the chain selector as a workaround in order to have multiple MIDI devices on one single track. And let me just quickly show you what that implies. You just use an instrument rack instead of your piano patch, let's say, and then you bring in your patch. So let's get a piano patch here, like this one. And then let's maybe get uh, some bass as well like this. So now we have two instruments on a single track. And then what I did in my previous video is I used the chain selector. So I would assign different values, different chain values to each instrument. And then I would record some MIDI parts. Let's do that on the fly. Uh, let's activate my MIDI computer keyboard here. Okay, so some random notes there. And as you can see, they are only triggering the piano. And why is that? Because if I deactivate my computer MIDI keyboard and bring the automation line here, if I go to instrument rack and to chain selector, you can see that the value is zero. Now, if I were to automate this, like if I were to set this to one, then watch what happens. See, this little blue guy here now has a red automation dot. It moved it to the right, so now those notes are triggering the bass. So that is all well and good because that way you can, you know, there's 128 possible values here. So you could stack 128 different kinds of sounds and trigger them separately, which is exactly the problem. The problem with this is you can never have one single media clip like this one contain in itself multiple sets of notes. So like these notes we have here are either going to trigger the piano or they're going to trigger the bass, not the piano and the bass at the same time. Or actually they could, let me remove the automation here and bring the chain value for the bass back to zero and now watch what happens. Now they are triggering both the piano and the bass, sure, but it's the same notes. So if this part was written for bass, then we don't want it to trigger the piano because the piano is going to have some different notes, most likely, right? Bass is going to be in the lower octaves, mostly monophonic, so one note at a time. Piano is going to be on higher octaves, you're going to be playing chords, you don't want the same notes to trigger both instruments. So the question is, how do we make it so that we can have different instruments, different devices, different sounds in one single track and different sets of notes in one single MIDI clip and make it so that those notes only trigger the instrument that they were meant for in the beginning. And I'm telling you, we can achieve that with a bit of a workaround and that means we're not going to use the chain paint here, we need to switch to key. So right now, both the piano and the bass are gonna play back notes, basically no matter what notes we're playing, right? They can span from C minus two all the way up to whatever note this is. Like every single one of the 128 possible MIDI notes is gonna trigger these instruments. But if I just right click here and choose distribute ranges equally, now we have a division and it's a very stupid one actually. Let me switch this around like this, because see now, whenever we write in or record a note between C minus two and uh, D sharp three, I think it is, that note is only gonna trigger my bass and leave the piano alone. 
And whenever we input notes above E3, those are gonna trigger the piano and not the bass. So this is a very simple example with just two parts, but can easily, easily get in at least four or five of these. So let's add some extra devices here. Let's get some brass and uh, maybe let's get some pads, maybe just one pad and maybe a guitar device as well. I'm just using some random devices here. Do the trick again, distribute ranges equally. So now we have divided them by notes and each part as you can see has a full two octaves all for itself. So the bass, let's put it on top, is gonna be triggered by notes between C minus one and C zero. My grand piano is gonna react to notes two octaves above that and so on and so forth. Now, I can already hear the smarter ones among you argue well, but what if you wanted to have some piano notes in this range right here, C2 to C4? Well, we would record those notes, but they would trigger my basic silk horns here. Well, that is not a problem. This is where the trick really applies. So let's, let's record some notes in that range around C3. Look at that, we don't even need to record new notes. We already have like the part we recorded before, which starts at C3 and the highest note is G3. So if we play that back, as you can see, it falls exactly into the range that we have assigned to the horns. Well, that is not a problem. What we need to do is number one, we need to bring those notes back into the piano range. So they start at C3, Let's transpose them down to C1. Very easy. Command A or Control A if you're on Windows to select all the notes. And then you click here and you type in minus 24. That's minus two octaves. So now if you play back our clip, the notes are in the piano range, but they are too low in pitch. Maybe we would like to have them at the C3 pitch. Well, this is where the trick really comes into play. You grab your pitch device, you slap it in front of the piano. So let me select the piano first, drag the pitch device there and set it to plus 24. So listen what happens. See the beauty of that? We just need to write or record the notes into the correct range. But then we can separately set the pitch for them by transposing them up or down. And potentially, if you have only maybe one octave per part, like you're sure that your bass part never exceeds one octave, you can just duplicate all of this, right? Do the distribute thing again. And now you have about an octave, a little more than an octave actually, for every single instrument here, which allows you to have 10 of them in your MIDI rack. Or, you know, maybe you need a little a little more than an octave, then maybe I can get rid of this uh, harp sound here, move this all the way up here, and then distribute ranges equally. So now you have a solid two plus octaves for each device. You can customize this to your needs. The important thing is that you make sure that you record or write in the notes at the octave uh, that they need to be in to trigger the instrument that you want them to trigger. And then once you've written them in in the correct octave, you can put your MIDI pitch device in front of the actual sound generator, and then you can control the pitch of those notes. You can have at least, I would say, at least four instruments per instrument rack, which means four instruments per track on your project for most productions. Just think of the size of your MIDI keyboard. Many people nowadays like having a small MIDI keyboard, which is two octaves, like the Novation Launch Key Mini, which I used to have. This is basically more than that for each sound. So, okay, all well and good, you might say, but it's still just one track, so you can only apply one processing chain, right? Well, think again, my friend, because you just need to unfold your track here, and boom, look at that. Every single sound has its own volume slider, panning control, mute and solo controls, and most importantly, it has its own signal chain. So you just wanna compress the bass, no problem. You go to your audio effects, dynamics, slap a compressor on there, and this is only gonna compress your bass. If you move over to your grand piano, there's no compressor there. Maybe you wanna EQ the piano, use your channel EQ. 
knowing that that EQ, whatever you do with it, is not going to affect your silk horns part, which is going to have its own signal chain. So that's the beauty of it. And all of it, of course, is 100% automatable. So you can have your complex automation moves going on just as you could with regular tracks. Now, there is one thing that you don't have in this specific scenario, which, as you might have noticed, are sends. Those are only on the actual track, and there is no separate sends for uh, the child tracks, let's call them. But I don't know about you, but this to me sounds like a very reasonable trade-off. I don't use sends that much anyway. I prefer to have every single track with its own you know, reverb or delay effects. Imagine having four or more sounds on one single track. Those eight tracks that you originally had now turn into eight times four, which is 32 tracks. But then again, I would only use this trick on seven tracks if I were you. Serve my eighth track for a drum rack. And I'm not gonna go into the details of that. If you wanna know all the nitty gritty, check out this video right here. But just let me just tell you that a drum rack, 128 different drum articulations. So imagine having your kick track and your snare track and your toms, 128 of those. So that's 128 tracks, again, with their own volume sliders, pan controls, mute, solo, signal chain, and what's even better is with drum racks, you also have internal send return controls, which you don't have on instrument racks. So that's a whole other layer, which again, check out that video if you want to know more about that. Uh, but imagine having 128 tracks plus another seven tracks with four different sounds on each. So that's another 28 tracks. So that's 156 tracks in Ableton by Vlight. So, you know, just saying, sounds pretty cool to me. So yeah, that was it. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. And that being said, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video one week from now. Take care.